the Orion 2 Winming's next iteration, leading their joystick range with modular swappable parts, making it highly customizable. As always, full disclosure, I received the hardware for free to review. It's professionally packed to survive mild knocks during transit and includes the tools you need to modify it. We'll also be looking at the optional cams, springs and damping kit. With an all-metal construction of the base, dual cam design and choice of handle is a great high-end stick. The suction cup base plate works well most of the time. It'll handle shocks, but sustained pressure will unstick it from your table requiring downwards force to hold it. If you've got an old warhol plate or other solution, I would highly recommend you attaching it to that instead, as the mounting holes match that of a TM Warthog gimbal base. Windwing handles attach via a reversed collar versus the industry standard, making it only compatible with Windwing's own handles. Unfortunately, these can be a bit fiddly to attach, and you've got to take care of installing the grub onto the flat side of the handle, else you'll potentially damage the thread and jam the handle, which makes an otherwise easy change a bit more difficult. It's compatible with existing Windwing twist and extension as well, but like all extensions, you're going to want a desk mount if you're using this. And speaking of which, the new base layout makes her a better fit versus the old design on mounts like my customised Verpal design. With 17 degrees of throw either side, a little lower than comparable sticks, I'd have liked to have seen 20 degrees, but 17 is better suited to extended use with Windwing's telescopic extension. Out of the box, the setup is solid, smooth to tentless, medium springs, and stepped cams, giving a gradual increase in resistance toward the outside. It's suitable for most users. It's easy to make fingertip corrections during intensive air-to-air -air refueling, and works just as well in combat. Suction loss aside, the stick does not suffer from significant rebound or cross-axis resistance, it provides largely even forces across the whole axis, so I've no major complaints here. So let's open up and customise it with the cam, spring and damping kit. Built to be really easy to customise without even removing it from its mountings, although the finish on the bolts wears out fast. You can swap out parts quickly without fuss, the pack contains a set of dampers, soft, medium and hard springs, soft and no centre cams, and with or without resistance as you move to the edge, and they're all clearly labelled. I've found a liking for soft springs, no centre, and no extra gradient, the NC01 cams, giving a light feel to the stick. Switching it up for an extension, I'd personally go for a soft centre and gradient 2 with medium or hard springs. The process of swapping components is slightly fiddly the first time, but easy to remove and replace from the base, without too much fighting. Extended, you'll find the stick doesn't have a serious spring rebound, but the tendency is increased. And this is where the optional dampeners can come in, in what is an unofficial configuration. You can attach the dampers and springs at the same time. However, you should take care doing this, as the retaining nut on the far side is hard to replace should you drop it from its socket. Hold it in place with a pair of tweezers when you remove the bolt, and then attach the damper brake drum. You adjust the resistance with the brake tension bolt, too much will cause the axis to stick, giving the dreaded stiction phenomenon, making small inputs difficult, so avoid excessive pressure. This significantly helps prevent unintended stick wobble and improves the return to centre handling versus without. It's not as nice as the dry clutch system you'd find on the Super Libra, but a very healthy improvement over none, making it a great choice for extended use. The final configuration is to remove the springs and cams all together, the idea being for helicopter use with the stick staying put where you place it, letting you avoid the nightmare that is the trim system abstraction in flight sims. It requires a reasonable amount of resistance, making the stick a little stiff, running it loose, the rubber cover will push your stick towards the centre when released at the extremities, so you've got to run it at a moderate stiffness, which makes a very fine correction just a little bit harder. This works great for general flight, allowing you to set into a cruise with ease, but I find myself working harder during hovering manoeuvres as you work to overcome the minor stiction and maintain smooth movements. Be careful setting this up, as it's easy to mistakenly leave the brake drums loose, which will result in a very sloppy centre, so if you experience this, double check your dampers are secured properly. Once set up correctly, the base works great holding your stick, but that extra tension required to hold it does also reduce your accuracy so I'd highly recommend the use of an extension in combination to give you greater leverage. You can feel a constant resistance to your movements that has a slight restitution, but otherwise feels quite nice overall. It's smooth and slides into and out of movements nicely with sufficient force. It has largely even forces across the whole axis, however you can feel a little cross-axis resistance if you attempt to draw a circle with a stick. It's very comfortable to fly around with, especially when you're settling into a cruise, saving the trouble of trimming all the time, letting you go hands-free with ease, whilst also being very easy to find the centre again. Of course, there's no centre detent now as we lack the cams. 
This allows you to set the stick and have the aircraft maintain a turn or speed without constant trimming or stick pressure required, lessening your physical workload which makes long flights just a little bit easier on your arms. For hovering, that mentioned restitution issue requires you to apply just a little extra force to get you started which without practice can result in overdoing your inputs. I find myself working just a little harder to correct for my own overcorrections. As I got used to the stick, the issue lessened significantly, making hovering more comfortable, but it'll always be a minor inconvenience versus a spring and cam configuration. Whilst it's not as good as a true force feedback simulation of the magnetic braking system for the trim, it's certainly worth looking at. Overall, I'd highly recommend giving this setup a go if you're regularly flying helicopters. The effort of swapping cams and springs regularly, however, might get a little tiring. So you might want to consider getting two bases if you frequently swap between fixed and rotary wing aircraft. And this is where you might wish to make aftermarket modifications, adding damping lubricant to the cams or Teflon inserts to the dampers, allowing you to negate the worst of these issues. So it's a pity women don't include these as part of the package. One final note to make is that the Orion 2 will be receiving a force sensing base conversion kit, which gives minimal deflection with a pressure sensitive input used instead. This aims to emulate the stick of an F-16 and looks to be a fantastic option that I'm excited to try, but it's not available just yet so look forward to a future video on that topic. Overall I'm impressed with the Orion 2, it's a good replacement for even the Libra and sits well amongst its peers. The modular options are fantastic and it's by far the quickest and easiest to modify. I'd personally say go for the Orion 2 over the Libra, despite the clutch being superior on the Libra, the Orion 2 offers much more customization when combined with the cam, spring and damper kit and it's much easier to find a mount for your desk with a wide range of compatible third party designs. There's less of a spring rebound problem than the Verbal Warbird, my main basis for comparison, although not quite as smooth running. And unlike the Warbird, fully supports the use of extensions with the dampers and lower overall stick throw. So you really can't go too far wrong with the Orion 2 joystick base, my complaints are mostly minor. It does the job, it's easy to customise, has a reasonable number of options, a unique design allowing you to quickly swap in and out internal parts, and convert it into a springless or force sensing base. It's available right now for about $216 or in a combo pack with the handle. Remember that taxes, delivery and import fees will apply based on your own location. If you'd like to see my review of the F-16 stick or my first impressions and comparison to the Orion 1, you'll find links on the screen and in the description below. I hope you've enjoyed and take care.